morning, my friends. It is I, Alphineas Goo, with Camera Mandy here in the studio, which is really an office, which is actually a studio, but we call it an office, right, Camera Mandy? Uh, yes, exactly. Say good morning to everyone. Hold on. I'll say Hold good. on. Oh, there you are. Good morning, everyone. Yes, look at, look at you can see me on the screen. Right? I know, I know. You're, that, I always that, like that. I think that's kind of cool. Shot. I can yes. give it a little wave, you know, wave and all that. Yes, you can see that there. Very cool. Alphonse, I feel like you got a haircut. I did. Yes, I needed to get to. Ms. Goo told me if I didn't clean up, she was going to clean me out. I don't know what that <laughs> meant, but it was, a, it was definitely... <laughs> Fair enough. <laughs> she said, uh, "She said you look like a wreck." I said, "I'm sorry, dear. It's been a little busy. Well, you know, it's been a kind of a, let's speak the truth, right, Camera Mandy, on our day job, right? We oh on goodness. our day job, which has been pretty crazy. Yes, this week it's has been, been pretty very, crazy. This week has been a lot, and we're trying to get ready for <clears throat> Genghis Khan. It's yes, and then so. on top of all that madness, we had all the OGL craziness, right? The you know, which is, I like woke up this morning and I was like. It's only been a week since Peter was here, but it I feels know. like it's been like two months <laughs> worth a, of work. And, and really, so. you know, that was sort of the pinnacle. That was what sort of everything was changing right at that time, you know, and we've been very uncertain for, you know, five or six weeks. And honestly, you know, the old man had a little inside information and had been talking to folks for some time, actually, about what uh, the rumor mill was saying about this thing before it even came out. So there was, uh, there was much trepidation, right? And so as us, you know, uh, this gooey cube, you know, we we have to think about what we're going to do and what does this mean and all of this kind of stuff. So anyway, I, I understand, Camera Mandy, that Gold Kim is going to show up later, right? He's oh, are we to, doing that still? I you, is that what you wanted to oh, do? Well, I did, but I thought we, I didn't think that we were doing yes, that. Old Kim is going to show up somewhere well, at the end of this thing for oh, about, okay. about ten minutes or so and just talk about what gooey cube is going to do given the new circumstance. Okay, sounds good to me. Yes, yeah, so that's what we're going to do. Hey, hold up that thing in front of you. That's oh, a this prize is, for, this that's is a prize for today. Oh, this, yes, this is the prize for today. So this, you know, this is magnificent. This is a, 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 a wonderful image of the Zion Dune, right? And, uh, and as you can see right there, there is the, um, the, the deeping elf, the dark elf right there, along with a, a, a very, uh, as Harry would say, relatively large fey model. But they can grow to as high, as tall as, as three feet. You know, typically they run about two and a half, two to two and a half foot tall. But uh, they can definitely grow as high as three feet. And remember, you know, in Zayafe, the, the elves are not huge, right? They're not really tall folk. So uh, anyway, but this is, this is uh, Theodrema, which is, uh, which is a cosmopolitan under Delvin uh, City. And uh, you can see the Lumines. And, uh, and, and as we are working right now in the Contributors uh, Guild, on uh, submissions for the Zion Dune. It's coming to a close here pretty soon. So if you have not, uh, if you've not uh, done your submission, you still have time and you get a nice little reward. We always, typically it's a, you know, between a half a page and a page of content, you know, 200 to 500 words for the submission. And we always give uh, a nice reward, uh, typically worth somewhere between 15 and $20. And uh, if your material is, is accepted and then we, uh, we put it in the material. What? So you get a chance to be a part of it all and, and help uh, craft the world. So uh, we're going to do a little social media. Now, you just launched so perfectly <clears throat> into social media because I had grabbed this graphic from like two weeks ago. Yes, yeah, an excellent segue. As yeah, they call about it, right? the Guild. You Indeed. know what? I got to say something though before we do this. You know, so I was writing in today, uh, and of course it's Black History Month, which is magnificent, right? A wonderful thing. And I listened to this, you know, you know this, Camera Mandy. I listened to this classical station, which is member supported right here in Colorado Springs. It's called KCME. And, uh, and they were playing some magnificent uh, uh, orchestral uh, uh, pieces from various, uh, from various wonderful movies. And, um, and they happened to be speaking about Roots, uh, which was uh, written by Alex Haley and, and was a, a phenomenal little mini let me, series. Let me just take off this graphic while we talk about this. Oh, okay, yeah, put subject. yourself on there. Put Hold yourself on. on there. Oh, no, yes. no, no, I'm just gonna <laughs> cut to you. <laughs> so, so, so it go was, ahead. But, but I, I, you know, if you have never seen Roots because you are, you know, younger, right? And you don't really maybe know about it very much or, it, but it was quite a phenomenon at the time. Well, they and, made us watch it in school. It was so good. Oh, it was yeah, it so was impactful. Magnificent. Well, it, Absolutely. I, listen, I don't know very many people who have watched that series and not not wept i don't know many um and it it was uh it was truly magnificent i encourage you if you've never seen it grab your your loved ones your friends whoever you know grab a group and just do a little bingey bingey watching and uh you know enjoy it uh it is uh, it is moving it is deeply impactful it is 
uh, it is wonderful. And, uh, and uh, the music was scored by Quincy Jones, who's one of my more favorite artists. And uh, it just, it, it, it was, and I just listening to the music this morning brought it back to me, you know? And so anyway, that uh, just a little aside, you know, we kind of, we like arts and creative stuff. You all know this in the, in the world of Zayafe and of course in our gooey den and all of that. So if you, uh, if you've never seen it, I encourage you to, uh, to spend some time. You will, you will love it. Anyway, sorry about that camera, Mandy. I, I know it's kind of tangential there. I think know. that was a great uh, <clears throat> tangent. So I, oh, I, oh, I got credit for a oh, tangent absolutely. this morning. Yeah, yeah this, no, uh, it's ew. important to talk about some of these. And, you know, also Black History Month is like a it's big an amazing, deal. yeah. Yeah, big deal. Big deal around our family, as you know, Camera Mendy. Yes. So let us. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, anyway, um, let's go ahead and move to social media then. Um, just give me a, I'm uploading our, we're going to go into Dark and Haven today, so I'm just uploading you know, our. Camera uh, Mendy, we're playing, uh, we're playing the uh, uh, Arbenden Forest game today. You know, I get to get back to the table again today. Oh, so that's exciting. Very exciting. Yes, uh, Devin's coming up and all the, the folks are coming over and. Uh, uh, we're going to uh, we're going to have a little game tonight. Your father included. You, you remember he's the grouchy one who threw, <laughs> threw the dice at me one time and called me. He said, "You're an asshole, dude. You're an asshole." That's what he said exactly. Threw the dice at I me. I know, and he's the kind of guy who makes us put money in the yes in the curse jar. jar. Yes, and he was the curser. Yes, he, in fact, he probably it owed you at least a hundred after that evening. Absolutely, at least a hundo. Yes, everybody likes. A, God, I didn't even realize you were going to show this. Of course Gigi I'm going to show this. I know, Gigi's been having Gigi. some fun. Gigi's having... Gigi. <laughs> He's been having some fun, for sure, with the, the AI. <clears throat> no, no, listen, I just got to... out the Alphineas family tree. This is not true. There's this. Uh, these twins do not exist. <laughs> And the triplet pirate sisters. Yeah, the triplet pirate sisters, who are quite hot, by the way, Cameron Mandy. I don't know if you noticed that. You know, they had they're... beautiful pink hair. Pink hair. Oh, I know, have... of course, you like the pink hair, I do. the purple hair. I love you know? the pink hair. Yes, yes. I don't think they're in the family tree either. Yes, let's but just be also, clear. But he's also, like, Geeky's also, like, he AI'd me. So there's this picture of me, and look at this. He he went and put this in an AI thing. Damn, Cameron Mendy. Uh, yeah, and then... You look badass right there, Cameron Mendy. I think he, like, did, like... Look, wait, go back, go back, go Hold back. Hold on, okay. Look at those biceps. I'm just saying, I wish. <laughs> I wish. They're, it's... Uh, look how flat they are uh, in the actual picture. Uh, <laughs> So he took this one and like. Oh shit! Yeah. Oh damn, Camera Mendy, you look like a queen. I'm or just something. saying, you know, yeah. You look no. like you're the conquering queen. I've right never there. been yes. AI before. It was, AI. It was, yes. it was pretty funny. I, I, you know, I, listen, this AI thing. You know, I, I listen. I don't mind. I want everybody to understand. I don't mind if you're enjoying it for personal use and all of that stuff. But please don't disemploy artists for a machine. You know, please don't do that. I know it'll save you money. I understand that. But damn. Look at you this. Anyway. An, AI, an AI machine will not spit out this gorgeous No, that is magnificent. Image. Yes, I, that, is, uh, that is the... And the, I'm showing this one because Harry... Yes, because Harry did this. Yes, yes. yes. Harry made the parasol lady. Look at those shoes. I know, way, the Cameron shoes are lady. everything. You've got to have those shoes. I'm you just know? saying. <laughs> I know. I, I want the whole outfit. I need to cosplay Mira. Mira now, Mira listen, Mandy. Harry's got a, got a My Mini Factory place now yeah and uh and as soon as he gets the patron thing up i'm going to be his at least try to be one of his first so um uh you know it's just uh, like a dollar you know and he's and again he's not really I do, this is not harry doesn't do this for money he does this for the joy of it right um and uh but uh camera mandy this is just a magnificent you know and, and harry yeah. keeps doing this we have all these different portraits of all these characters and Characters keep showing up in miniature, and it is uh, it is just magnificent. And Harry, looking forward to seeing you at Genghis Khan and playing and in the Savage Wedgie World, Savage Wedgie, Savage World, Savage, Savage World, World <laughs> game. Yes, that's a, sorry, Wedgie. That's a different great game. launch into our next topic. Yes, oh, Genghis Khan. <laughs> Genghis Khan. Okay. Yes, ha ha. So, uh, just a quick moment to talk about Genghis Khan. Um, we have posts now up in Discord and up on Facebook, and we'll be sending out an email. Um, anyone who is going who wants to attend GUI Cube events uh, that we are hosting needs to go fill out a form and RSVP for them. So that way we know how much food to get and how much stuff to So there's organize. first, there's, there's Wednesday night, if you happen to be there early, and yes. we aren't sure where we're going yet because the pizza place is now telling us they're not really comfortable with having 30 or 40 of us crazy nerds in there. You know, the, yeah. it's a nerd, it's, it's nerd discrimination. <laughs> oh my gosh. So, <laughs> I, think it's more I like, don't know why, because you know we eat a lot of pizza. It's more like group Mindy. discrimination. Like they're just so, <laughs> no, yeah. they're, they're small. Yeah, right? so it's we're trying small. to yes, yeah, we're a, trying to find a nice place. And, um, and Andrew even said we could hang out at his place. Yes, so we're potentially. Talking about, yeah, we're talking if about that. Depending on how many people are there. So yes. Wednesday night we have like kind of it's just a meetup, 
And then Thursday, we have the Great Gooey Dungeon Game Show, which yes. you have to buy those tickets through the Genghis Khan website. But then the after party needs to be RSVP too, so we know how many people to buy food for. Um, now, these are light eats. Yeah, this is, yeah, don't, don't, Later, don't expect catered dinner. Catered by Costco. Oh, so. uh, yes, Cameron Mendy, I got to dab my nose. Go oh, to you. Okay, 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 go to you. Just to... switch over to you. Hold yeah. on, it just takes me a second. Yes, it always takes a second. Okay, yes. that's fine. Yes, okay. very good. Now, you, hold on. I do... now you... <laughs> oh, God, I'm muting you. Mute, mute, mute. <laughs> Okay, anyway, you just like blew out some people's oh, eardrums. Oh, my apologies, my apologies. Including mine. Okay, so uh, where was I at with this whole description? Okay, so yes, um, and then on top of that, the other thing uh, is Kickstarter orders. If you'd like to pick up your Kickstarter order, we're trying to get stuff ship, starting to ship right now for uh, Magicka and uh, Witch's Wrath. Um, however, if you want to pick it up, uh, Genghis, we need to just know ahead of time so we can prepare the order. Uh, and then on top of that, one more thing. Harry is running a charity game, and you can win to play with Alphineas here. So Alphineas will be a player at the Am table. Am I back muted, unmuted? Uh, yes, I have unmuted uh, you. I have unmuted. Yes, this is <laughs> going to be very exciting. We're going to yes. do all kind of craziness. Yes, I might even bring snacks. And so the raffle tickets are $5 per ticket. Oh, you should definitely bring some snacks. I'm sure we'll have some leftover. So yeah, $5 per ticket. You can buy as many tickets as you want, and they're going to support an awesome charity. We'll, we'll put out more information yeah, about Yeah, we got this. all kinds of... The, the, yeah. the GUI Game Show's supporting charity. Uh, we got wonderful guests on the GUI Game Show because because Andrea's going to be there, and Luke is going to be there, and Mike Mike is going to join us, right? And Tommy is going to join us, right? Um, yes. And then, uh, uh, and Mike, then uh, Donnie might show up and hang out, although he always complains that he doesn't want to do it, then he shows up anyway. <laughs> love you. We love you. I, he's on the stream right now. <laughs> ah, so. excellent. Ah, yeah. Yes. So, yeah, it's Andrea. I uh, hope maybe Donnie will find out. Mike, um, Mike Dunn from yes. Gaming Trends. Tommy Rice. Tommy yes. Rice and Luke Igax. Yes, and Luke. Yes, it's going to be fun, fun, fun. And then, of course, you get a chance, if you're in the audience, to come up and play yes. because it keeps going, right? And we've got a crud load of prizes, right? And if you're on the GUI stream, you can win because you have a representative at the table along with the people in the room. Yes. So it's a magnificent fun time. Yes, very, very good. Yes. Okay. I'm going to try to kill a character anyway. this year. I've never done that yet. I'm going to have to put a little extra oomph oh my into, gosh. The, into the thing, you know? I'm curious <laughs> to see because Brandel has won all of them. I so know. Brandel keeps winning. Winning. We need to give her a. I, I think there's one thing that we need to do. We need to take away um, her because she she never takes damage because she has a slip and slide thing. Yes, the slip and because slide. Because she's a wizard, so we were like. Yeah, we're already anyway, getting killed. Yeah, we're getting so. we're, we're going down yeah, a track here. Yeah, okay. Anyway, anyway that, Genghis Khan. Yes, please go check out that post. The stream will be going on the Great Gooey Dungeon Game Show. It's going to be an amazing time. So even if you're not able to attend, you're about, you can be there with us in spirit. On I got one more thing I'm going to tell about Genghis Khan. Okay, go ahead. So right now, marvelous AJ and I are working on this little adventure for Genghis Khan, which will be one that we'll probably run at, at other conventions as well, called Peculiar Brews. So Peculiar Brews is a little tale that begins at a place called the Lute and Flute in the city of Darkenhaven, where you meet Commander Donald Arnold and his marvelous uh, spouse, Andrea Arnold, who are quite uh, famed in town, in the city, yes? And they, uh, they have learned of something that they need you to learn more about. Unfortunately, you have to leave Darkenhaven and go across the river into the fearful place known as the Mournwood. Which was where the original? What's wrong, Cameron Mendy? Um, I'm just standing up and doing. I'm just things. not happy with how She's bright. She's not happy with my brightness. So I'm just. Gonna... It was like Sybil Shepherd in Moonlight. <laughs> See, not, in, uh, all you young people don't know what I'm talking about, but in Moonlighting, you do Moonlighting. You know what I'm talking about Cameron Mendy. No. This was a show on TV, and Sybil Shepherd played with Bruce Willis in this movie, in this oh show, God. and it was very cute and very, very charming. It was. A, it had a little bit of the feeling of maybe something you might know about. Um, uh, what, what's the little detective show with? Um, um, oh, goodness gracious. Dora the Explorer? No, no, no. Sorry, sorry. <laughs> anyway, she was always backlit. Whenever every image that you saw of her, she was backlit. So her gold hair was all shiny. Anyway, that was like me right there. Now I'm all dull. And we got like just, just very distracted off of the story that you were telling. Yeah, so, so the okay. Mournwood, you go across the river mm -hmm. into the Mournwood, and you go to a place called the Shallow Grave Distillery. Ooh. And there, the adventure begins. Oh, what am I doing? What? What are you doing? Um, 
I should have put this up during that oh, entire look conversation. At that. Yes, look at that peculiar brew. I got I got distracted, <laughs> and here's the brewery. I even pulled stuff for this, the Shallow yes. Grave Distillery. So now, that was actually the in process one. So if you go back to the one you had before, uh -huh. I showed this because people like to see, you know, the artwork. Now you can see the finish right there. Oh. Right there's the finish of the Shallow Grave Distillery. Now the interesting thing about the Mornwood is that this is where uh, the original inhabitants who had taken shelter in the gloom port during the Woe of Ruin, when they emerged, they actually began building their settlement, not on the west side of the Mistroon, but on the east side. Yes. And so this settlement grew and was doing pretty well. And then apparently a group of uh, some kind of mages attempted to do some, um, some magic uh, beyond their ken. They attempted to kind of mess with the high magics, which had, of course, been very uh, impacted by the, uh, the, the woe of ruin and the nether flow. And so they literally, no one really knows exactly what happened. I do, but no one else does. And uh, maybe a couple other people know. But anyway, the whole thing was like destroyed. The entire settlement, all kinds of, of issues, right? All kinds of things. Artifacts were buried, right? And so now the Mornwood is not just uh, just uh, impacted by that cataclysm. It's impacted by the residual magics and those kinds of things that are going on there. And so there's a lot of stuff going on. And what we love about the Mornwood, just as an aside for you game masters, right? What we love about the Mornwood is literally outside the gates of the city of Darkenhaven. You don't have to travel many miles. All of that stuff is this magnificent area of adventure because you have the Mornwood, which is there to the east across the river, and then you continue a little further, and there is Mu'uz Duran, right? And the Mu'uz Duran is the ancient city of the Atherns that turned completely over during the Woe of Ruin and crashed to the planet, right? I should have told you, cameraman, you could have showed a picture. But anyway, but this is, this is Peculiar Brews. Now, Peculiar Brews is going to be the introduction, the beginning of the marvelous tale called the Wrath, excuse me, called the Blood for the Khan. Okay, now chapter two is probably going to be called The Wrath of the Khan because we're going to give a little nod to, uh, to an, ancient, uh, an ancient tale that was uh, told in the, in the Star Trek world. But, uh, <laughs> but uh, the first one is going to be called Blood for the Khan. And uh, the, the Khan is maybe a little bit of a nemesis of the Arnolds, as well as a mysterious figure. Ooh, so, wait, so, wait, so let me get this straight. In this version of your universe, Donnie and Andrea, however their names are, are actually Donald foes. and Andrea. Yeah, are foes of the Khan. Of the Khan. When in real life, they own the Khan. They own the Khan. <laughs> and maybe with that adventurer's help, they will eventually own the Khan again. Ooh. Yes, ha ha. Yes, Mic drop. Okay, I love so, it. So, so listen, so, so anyway, Peculiar Brews is, is going to be fun. It's, it takes place right around the shallow, shallow grave distillery. There's a number of places that you get to go. And the way the, the Peculiar Brews is going to be structured is the game master, we think, is going to be able to sort of pick and choose places to place things. So every adventure will be different. So you get to, if you go here with one game master, you might find something and it's totally different from if you go there with another game master. Uh. So we think it's going to be a lot of fun for our game masters. Uh, and our goal is to have the manuscripts uh, uh, in your hands by around the 15th, 16th of the month, so the game masters have plenty of time to prepare. Also, as a gift, all of our game masters are going to get a signed and printed version of, uh, of the Peculiar Brews adventure. Now, the last part of this is uh, Gooey Cube needs a little cash. We're doing all right, don't worry about us, but, we're, but we need a little cash. And so what we're going to do with, uh, with Donnie and Andrea's permission is we are going to launch a mini, sort of a mini Kickstarter at Genghis Khan. And that is going to be to fund the development of Peculiar, uh, not Peculiar Brews, but the, the Blood for the Khan adventure. And, and there'll be more, there'll be a little uh, campaign guide and a, a, an extended map of the Mornwood as stretch goals and some other wonderful things. So that as we produce Darkenhaven, which we're getting pretty, you know, pretty close on book one to, to really, I mean, the layout's looking good. Wait, wait till you see. Still a ton of work. This is, this is a massive, massive undertaking. We're going to go to Darkenhaven. In a, in a second. Anyway, yeah. so, so, but, but what a wonderful thing to put this out around the same time that we're putting out Darkenhaven. I love so, it. So, yeah, it's really, I, and, and, and I promise you, y'all, uh, AJ and I have been bouncing this one back and forth. It is 
great. It is a great adventure with some incredible artworks, some very interesting nemeses, different ones that are at different odds. Yes, it's, uh, it's, it's, uh, it's very, very good. Very, very good. So, uh, so look forward to that. We would love your support for, uh, for the uh, Blood for the Con uh, Kickstarter that will launch at Genghis Khan. And, uh, and we would uh, appreciate that help if you can do it. We promise, as always, it'll be a great value and wonderful, wonderful materials. And, um, and as we've fulfilled most of our Kickstarter, save for a few things, we feel like uh, people won't be too frustrated with us. We're, our goal is to, to not have this be too impactful of our other work. So, uh, so that, is, uh, that is what we are doing. But we appreciate you all for your support and help. And uh, that's the tale. All right, camera Mendy. Okay. So I guess it's not really social media as much as kind of announcements. I right? know, sometimes. <laughs> yeah, but I actually have social media. Ah, social okay, media. <laughs> like things here. Okay, so we'll just go through these real quick. Uh, this was an adorable comic. Yeah. Uh, this is from uh, Jake, Jakey uh, Boarts, I'm sorry, on Twitch. Yes. Um, the credit's on the screen here. Uh, but it's but just, who shared it originally? It was, it was Adrian who okay, shared it. Obviously. Oh, yes, yeah. right there, yes. Right and there. it's just so cute. Yeah, really, really. What a dear, you know, sort of. And of course, the gooey cube things, right, are always special to us. Yes. So, yeah, that was wonderful. I All right. It. Okay, uh, this was a very cool oh, idea. Yeah. Hans put this so up. you can yes. you can purchase this um, from Steampunk Theme Roulette, seven and one dice, customize happy dot com. Anyway, uh, but it is an incredible die. I don't even and know what you video. call it. There was a video. Yeah, this is this is a <clears throat> screenshot from the video. So if you watch it, yes. it's it's. By just, the way, do you notice? Look at that thumbnail. This this person this. This model needs not to bite their nails. Oh my gosh. <laughs> Don't bite your nails. The marketing person, Don't of course. <laughs> the marketing person's going to be like, uh huh. Okay. Don't bite your nails. Okay. <laughs> I and, always remember, Ms. Goo always says that, you know, we like basketball in our house. Mm. We, we watch uh, Steph Curry, who is a, a warrior player. And uh, Steph Curry is always nah, 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 on TV, right? And Ms. Goo is always, Steph. Stop biting your nails. <laughs> oh, my God. Such a... <laughs> I know. We went way off the track. Okay. Right All right. Continue anyway. on. Hans, this is magnificent. Yeah, it was a very cool concept for Dice. I definitely recommend checking it out and uh, looking at the video. Yes. Okay. Um, yes. The Witch's so Wrath right. is so we, printed. Yeah, we have the physicals. Uh, we just need to assemble them, and we're going to start shipping stuff out here. Very exciting. The marvelous James and James worked on this, and we had Kevin's wonderful help and AJ's wonderful help, and it is a wonderful wonderful creepy adventure that sort of takes you back into the uh into the forest in the same general area where you might have visited in chapter three of the campaign so this is something that i love you all i've told you this before you know i i don't really like having my adventures sort of be go here 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 I like to go here and come over there and then come back and then go over there and then go over here and then over here and then come back to there and really make the world feel alive like the passing of time is continuing. But the witch's wrath, magnificent. <laughs> Very excited. Yes. Oh, this was great. Yeah, Kevin yeah. put this up. This is a... Now, I, I kind of wonder, you know, this is a tree, right? This is, is, is this photoshopped camera, Mendy? I don't this? know if it is. Mm -hmm. I, I mean, there was no credit, so yeah. I just assumed it was a photo, but I, I guess it could be. This is the kind of thing you'll never see in Colorado, though, because we don't have trees like this. No, no, we don't. We absolutely do not. But anyway, <laughs> it, is, it is gorgeous. It, 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 it was one of those things that inspired, like, an encounter in my head. Yes. Um, of, and, I, and, and, and camera, Mendy, I put something up, because I really want everybody to hear this. I am so inspired by the gooey den. I am so inspired by you, the creative things you put up, the posts, the funny comments, you know, all of this stuff. And the community is so magnificent. And I can't thank you enough. And I meant every word that I said, because as a creative person in my whole career, in my life, you know, I get inspired by words. I get inspired by images. I get inspired by thoughts and, and dreams, right? And, and this, is, this is why the, the den is so special to me. And, and I think to many is because so many people bring all of this juice right into this uh, this magnificent place and all of these pictures and things that just make it so so wonderful so agreed wonderful. there was a lot <clears throat> of stuff i couldn't pull it all because we have so much stuff to do but <laughs> yes um, yes yes okay so this is actually posted a couple weeks ago we were supposed to get it to last week yes, but we didn't like get to it. it okay so um we had todd on and he had talked about ultimate dungeon um i think that's what it's called Right? Ultimate Dungeon? Well, yes, they're doing the Ultimate Dungeon, but this was just an example. Yeah, of this is they... an example <clears throat> of what you can do with it and how you can, like, set the the scenes and, like, change the scenes and yes, stuff like that. So right. Car Carl posted this. Um, 
and yeah, it looks awesome as a way well, to. And, and a lot of people think, you know, you got to you got to have expensive terrain and you have got to have these miniatures and all that stuff, which I think are wonderful. Remember, I'm a crazy terrain person, right? Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, for many years, we played with dominoes. Dominoes were our walls, and uh, and we had just a few miniatures that we reused and reused and reused. I do and... not recommend dominoes as walls. I I liked it at first, except that we could not get them to stay because like my dad used them like a couple months ago, and we walked in like this is amazing, but then the walls kept falling down. So you need to get the not the cheapy dominoes. You, you need more beefy dominoes. Yeah. But, you know, honestly, now with the three D printing thing, you know. Uh-huh. There's so many walls that you can get out there. You can print them. They have little bases, so they kind of stand up. I mean, it's it's really. I wish I had brought a picture. <clears throat> I bought. I actually bought like a D and D kit for my dad for Christmas. Oh. Um, and it, it all it is is like all these paper walls. And I saw his yeah, picture. Yes. Yeah. And so and I got it from Gamers Haven. I went down there and they. Yes. I was, Rob. Rob is magnificent. Yeah. Yes. And so anyway, um, I'll I'll bring a picture for that because there there are so many easy ideas if you want to do that, but you don't have to because at the end of the day. You can play with just a map and markers and you have a can, good time. Because it's all here. Exactly. Yeah, it's magnificent. Oh yes, Addie. Addie with her um uh, They're like weapon they're yeah, like oh, yeah, dice she's weapons. Good, she's good to whack you. <laughs> <laughs> but really pretty, right? This is Addie's an artist. She made the gooey cube necklaces that we oh, have. I have, and, I have a I have um, one right here. Oh yeah, you have one. I can yes, show it. Yeah. So we uh we we she made these and um and they're oh. really, really wonderful. So we we love Addie, we love her work. So all right, Kim Romendi, what's next? Okay, um, Stephanie, I think has a Kickstarter still going? Yes, so, and, and I backed it. Yep, I awesome. sure did. Yes, I did. So, uh, she's the one who made our beautiful <clears throat> This little clay. guy right here. I'm picking it up right here. So see this this little one right here. Yeah, yeah. it's magnificent. Ooh, right in front of my nose. <laughs> Hold on. I also have one. There we go. Very cute. So talented. So anyway, uh, I love her stuff, and go pack her gift. Starter. That'd be awesome. Yes, and, and we really, you know, we do this, right? Remember on Mondays, you are free to advertise in the GUI Den. And as long as it does not get overwhelming, uh, we, we love uh, to support the community. You know, I try my best to help here and there where I can. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm a backer. Uh, I'm a backer of Kickstarters. I'm a patron for miniature makers. I, you know, I, I think that's part of being a good part of the community. Assuming you got the cash, right? Never feel pressured to spend money that you don't have because that can get you in all kind of trouble. Right, that's from Grandpa Shoe. That's not. Uh, <laughs> that is not from Alphinius, right? Okay, yes. yes, yes let's continue. Come on. Yeah. Okay, I don't know what this was. This is from a couple of weeks ago, but there were these Dungeons and Dragons DVDs that, that's like, from the show. show was that. So there was a Dungeons and I didn't know this. Yes. So there's a Dungeons and Dragons when show. When I was younger, much younger, uh, but I was not quite. Uh, I can't remember exactly the first year it came out. If anybody in the chat knows that. Um, but yes, it was uh, it was pretty fun little show. We had a cartoon, you know, all that kind of stuff. So, uh, yeah, Dungeons and Dragons. Yes, yes, yes. How fun! And uh, lastly, I took this picture. Yes. I, I should put it up when we were talking about terrain. So Matt is um, running Astronaut. Yeah, and uh, these are Warlock t- tiles. Yes. I should have mentioned this. So again, like like very like simple but easy way to get across to your players where they're at and kind of set the scene so yes. and again you know it, it's 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 all dependent on you. you know i love this dwarven forge i've been collecting it since the i now this is interesting because i in my mind i thought it was like right around 1990 1991 19 in that range when dwarven forge actually launched but i just learned that it's actually 1996 so you've been so giving false information i've been giving out false information i mean yes. I, wow like i mean you talk to the whole mm. audience at gen con Yes. <laughs> this is what happens, Cumberman. I know you. It's oh. easy to lose track of time. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, okay. So what do we do next? What, okay, what do do? so we're gonna do a book club, but we're kind of deviating from the book. So um, we are in the middle of the geography section. Yes, we are talking so this is about. Page. Let me put on my my uh, my spectacles. Right, not the not the monocle. We tried the monocle. It oh, I have a work. picture of it. Oh it's God. hilarious. Yes, the monocle I can't wait is to post awful. That. Yes, right, so I'm putting this on here. So this this is the uh, this is on page 63, right? And it begins well 60 61 begins the lands of Zyothe, and then we go to the continents, right? And the first continent because that's where we began our marvelous tales, right? is uh, the, the one on the top, sort of top middle left, which is called Vedestia. And now Vedestia before the War of Ruin, as you're looking at the map, Vedestia before the War of Ruin was a single continent. It did not appear as it appears today. In those times, the, the central lowlands were actually sort of the breadbasket of the entire Ethernic Empire. 
and the Thunic Empire was on every continent. Uh, there was there's there's much lore around them, and they emanated from the 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 central uh, the central continent, which is you can see there is called Crooks because this is a map from today. In those days, it was called Resplandia, and and uh, Resplandia was the seat of the Athenic Empire, the entire continent, but it was also where more magic was employed than anywhere else on the face of the planet by 10, 20, maybe even 100 fold, right? And so this is why when the magics were, high magic were, were, were literally uh, impacted and, and corrupted and, and literally made not achievable anymore, uh, and all magic was infested with the Everflow, this is what happened to, to Resplansia. And it is now, uh, the, what is certainly, probably the most terrifying place on the on the face of, of the world of Zyothe. Um, I had a comment. Oh, yes, please. It was, oh, oh I, can't, I don't know who said it, but they said it looks like a nice vacation spot. Yeah, go hang out on the beach. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, so Verdestia has two parts, and we have done lore books on both of them. West Verdestia, which is, of course, the one to the west, and East Verdestia, which is the one to the east. And, and, and as you know, Camera Mandy and everyone knows, this is a little pixelated, but I'm a map freak, right? I love, I love maps. And I think that maps bring so much life and breath to the adventure. And so our plan is to, to produce this wonderful style of map for all of our localities as we go forward, all of our continents. And then, of course, to do the sectional maps, which as you zoom in. So West Modestia, in, oh, go back real quick, Camera Mandy, I'll just make sure everybody has, has their... their area. So if you see <clears throat> on the left-hand side of West Verdestia there, the further west, you can see sort of in the middle of the continent, there's that sort of mountainy thing sticking up there with, with brown around it. So that is actually Mu'uz Duran that I mentioned earlier, the ancient city of the Atherns that turned over and literally crashed, crashed to the planet uh, in that locality. And, and now you can go forward, Camera Mandy. And it is literally uh, in the... Uh, very much the, the heartland of the, the Republic, which is called the Midland. And, and this, is the, this is where sort of we began the, the, the foundations of, of all of the explorations and, and the things of Zayathe. And, and uh, this is very uh, European, central, uh, Western to Eastern, Northern to Southern. Uh, we sort of mashed it all up like we're doing with all of our uh, all of our continents, um, taking from our rich culture in the world that we have, our cultures in the world that we have. And so the Republic, <clears throat> the Republic is, is sort of situated in this, in this sort of central region of the Western portion of the continent. And the reason why Mandy said we want, we want to, do, to uh, deviate a little bit is because today we're going to talk a little bit about Dark and Haven. And she even has some pictures for you. Oh, I have lots of pictures. And since we are working on Dark and Haven, so I'm gonna. So even though I'm cheating a little bit on the book club, so so there are, there is some information about Dark and Haven in here. You'll be able to look at that. But but we're gonna talk a little bit more because obviously we're we're, we're very, all very excited because our goal. I, I promise you this, my friends. Our goal is to make this Dark and Haven and Gloomport, these two boxes, the uh, the pinnacle of of cities that have been made for the TTRPG world. Uh, from the graphics and the artworks to the tales and 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 really, really make it special. So uh, if you go back, Camera Mandy, just to ground people who don't know about the city of Dark and Haven, there it was on the... Oh, well, we the, can see it. it. You see it there on the on the Dark Silver Bay, and you can see the city there on the edge of the Mistroon River. And then, of course, the Mornwood is a small forest that lies on the other side. And then you continue on to the east, and you come to, to fearful Mu'uz Duran. So, so the Zion Dune, let me ask you a question about the Zion Dune. Yes, the Because we've been talking about, the yes. Okay, so like, if you go into the Gloomport, and Gloomport is part of the Zion Dune? It would be anything under the, anything under the surface of the, the world is considered uh -huh. the Zion Dune. But there are places, there are parts of the Zion Dune, right? There's a far deep, right? There's so the, the middle areas, right? There's, so there's different, and, and as we explore this, you know, this is going to be wonderful, right? And, and obviously, here's sorry, question, no, no, go ahead, please, I'm sorry. Okay, so the Zion Dune is in West Verdestia, but is it in other Every, places? Every, the Zion Dune is the collective name of the under Delvin locations in the entirety of Zyothe. So in Zundestia, we'd have a Zion Dune. The Zion Dune exists as well. Oh, yes, interesting. that's uh -huh. exactly right. That's uh -huh. exactly right. So anyway, so, so the interesting thing about Darkenhaven and the reason it is called Darkenhaven, it's actually named this, is because the Gloomport was where so many took refuge during the Woe of Ruin and saved their lives. 
So if you see, the, there's that massive cavern opening between the twinning falls, right, that are right there, the two falls of the Mistroon River, and, and literally boats go in there and out of there, and there is a massive underground cavern which has a, a, a harbor, uh, and and many many docks and ports and, and all of that. It's just magnificent, right? It is it, way too. We're almost done with the maps. We have we have uh, one and a half maps left to go, and the nine map set, seventeen by twenty two each map. The nine map set of of uh, the Goon Ports is finished. Dockenhaven is done. Six seventeen by twenty two maps. Beautiful, all magnificent. But anyway, so so Dockenhaven is basically sort of split into three parts, if you think of it this way. The first part is Governor's Isle, which you can see right there. And that is the island that sits between the two, uh, the two forks of the Mistroon River. And Governor's Isle is where all of the government of not just the, the city, right? There's another image of it looking at it across the rivers at the magnificent Keyshore did this one. This is wonderful. Uh, Ferdinand did the one you just saw. Um, but uh, but the, the governor's isle, when you look across the river, you can see it, uh, is where the seat of the government of not just the republic is, but also of the city itself. And so there's a castle there and all of that kind of stuff. And it's obviously a, a little hard to get to because you'd have to come across the river if you were trying to attack. So it's a strategically favorable location, certainly on the, the side where the cliffs are and the, the waterfalls, very, very difficult to attack. So it's got some... It's got a lot, of, uh, a lot of strategic reasons why they made it Governor's Isle. So pop back real quick, Cameron Mendy. Okay, let's go back Just here. to the previous picture. Okay. So beyond Governor's Isle, as you move sort of to that northwesterly uh, direction, you can see the city proper. And this is where the, the, all the buildings and many, many different things, the God's Ward, and, and this is where one of the marvelous things happened with, with Darkenhaven is so many of you uh, made things to go into the city and places and characters and it is incredibly exciting for us to to move down this road and make this marvelous city that has had so many of our friends give little contributions to so we are we are very excited about it uh, you know and and uh and jen's of course it sort of led the, sh the, the, sh the the push on this uh so and has worked very very hard but not just jen's you know there's been many you know all the god's word group this is wonderful group of people that just just put the god's word together is magnificent you know there are the, the scrivener square thing is going on and pe and of course boogerton which is you know kind of the downtrodden area and well isn't this is boogerton right uh yes this is called the firehouse so the firehouse is where much of the trash and refuse is uh, is burned uh, in the uh, in this area, and if, and the problem is that one of the reasons why Boogerton is is Boogerton is because the prevailing winds tend to keep the smells from not just the firehouse, but also there's a place where they sort of treat the sewage. They kind of keep the smells all in the the Boogerton area, and then take them out of the over the walls, you know, to the to the northwest. So, so Bogerton isn't just kind of, uh, kind of just uh, d dirty because of uh, uh, circumstances. It's, it's dirty because people, if they can avoid living there, don't want to deal with the scents, right, and all of that kind of stuff. So, so um, and of course, Bogerton's probably my favorite place in Dockenhaven because of all the cool things that happen there and the interesting people, right? You know, there's poverty and people who are trying to get out of poverty and there's, you know, some crime and sort of some of that kind of stuff and and uh, it really and and some good people who are trying to trying to change Bogerton. You know, it's it's really it's a it's a, a wonderful mashup. But yes, this is the firehouse uh, in Dockenhaven, and, right. and this is just one of the artworks you'll be getting in the in the box as we uh, as we produce it. Um, so we're gonna go through some locations of Dockenhaven, uh, but before we get started let's start with the portrait giveaway oh, uh, yes. in terms of like getting our entries yes so this is important so uh, we're giving it away next weekend correct yes so this next week you will have another opportunity to enter for the portrait somehow in, in the gooey den camera and i are going to figure that out but we are giving away three portraits okay one is a donation from marvelous randy Another is a donation from Marvelous Jim, who both have their characters already done and had another portrait. And they just said, you know what? There's people out there who maybe can't afford to get a portrait. I'd like to donate that. And so, Jim, Randy, thank you. You're marvelous. So if you've won a portrait, or excuse me, if you have a portrait that has been done, you can't win one of those. Okay? So just know that, uh, that if you enter. But we also are giving away a portrait that anyone can win. 
So if you win it, you can give it away to someone else, et cetera. This is a $200 value, and I really want everyone to understand it's, it's not a big money maker for GUI Cube. We don't use AI art to make, our, to make our portraits. We have artists that do them for us, and we pay those artists, and we don't pay them you know, a pittance. This is not, uh, here's 25 bucks, make us a portrait. That is not what we do. So, uh, so it'll be a well-done portrait, a, a magnificent portrait, and, um, and, and we will pay the artist well, and then you get a folio with it, and you get wonderful uh, a print that's suitable for framing and all that stuff. And if you win that one, and you already have a portrait, do not worry, you can gift it to someone else. So if you want to enter that, and, in, and if you've been attending Goo Morning's IFA, you know that you've been able to get multiple entries. So, but you'll also be able to get another entry uh, as we post about this this week in the GUI Den, so people can enter again in that in that capacity. But if you've been watching at Goo Morning and you've been doing the multiple entries, you are in a wonderful position because your odds are significantly increased because you can enter more than once based on your participation here. All right. So, Camera Mendy, what so is the code? It's just hashtag portrait. Is there any capitalizations or anything? It doesn't. It doesn't matter. <clears throat> so just it, it just helps me because we do. This oh, that's all. right. Because it's not the moobot. Yeah. Box, so right? it's it's I. It Why just is helps it called me. a moobot camera? I don't. Know. It's just the program that we use. <laughs> so yeah. So right now, just do hashtag portrait, and then in about five minutes, we'll open up the for the special giveaway. Yeah, that's you, the secret. Yeah. Have you decided what that is? I yeah. mean, you said that you knew what yeah, it was, but you also haven't told me. So I feel like that's a sure indicator that you are going to make it up on the fly. No, you want me to tell you right now. Yeah, I really want to know. It is an autographed box set of Dark and Haven. <gasps> well, that works out just perfectly for our tour here. That sounds awesome. Yes. So, okay. So now you know what the secret is. And this is one that's collectible because there won't be many of those in the world. There'll be boxes of Dark and Haven. I think there'll be lots of them in the times to come. But uh, there won't be many that will be signed. So, okay. Uh, so that's a, that's a kingly gift. Okay, so, so right now, just hashtag <clears throat> portrait, and then I'll open that one up in a few minutes. Yes, the and secret, then we'll do... which is no longer a secret. I know, I'm glad to know. And then uh, we'll also be giving away By the... By the way, I just to chat, this, these kind of things, these little tours and stuff like that, folks like them, this is good, this is something that you enjoy. Uh, I just want to make sure that we're on a good track for people. Yeah, if we Saturdays suck, just let us know. Yeah, if we suck. <laughs> and honestly, you know, really, I mean, I, I did get some feedback that people love the social media. They just didn't want it quite as long. So we're, we're going to cut that back a little bit. But we're still going to do it because a lot of people still love it. Um, but we're going to focus a little more on contentual things and, and stories and tales. And of course, you know, we've been, we've been trying to do that as much as possible, keeping the book club going because a lot of people like that as well. So, and once we get done with The Weirded World, then we'll probably progress to uh, West Vedestia. Woohoo. Yeah, marvelous. All right. Okay. Yeah, so this is the Colosseum. I actually have two images of this. Yes, there's one at night and one in the day. Is that not magnificent? Yeah, yeah they're, they're <laughs> wonderful. So Edward did this. Uh, and, and, uh, and of course, the Colosseum district has, you know, all kinds of wonderful things there because it's a place of great entertainment. And, uh, and uh, we're very excited to... Uh, what kind of things happen in the Coliseum? So they have everything from races to sporting events, right, to, uh, to contests of non-lethal uh, non -lethal combat. Uh, that is not something that is, uh, that is permitted in Darkenhaven. Now, down in the Gloomport, there might be a little more of that kind of crap going on. Yes, but, uh, you know, this is the way it is in the sort of seedy underworld of Darkenhaven, yes. But here, it is, it is, it is really spectacle, right? And... Um, there are even some thoughts that we could have uh, little teams from various places that come and compete. So, you know, this is all going into this Dark and Haven discussion. So we'll see how that, uh, how that progresses. So that maybe someday, you know, your adventuring party can, you know, go up in a Blood Bowl style kind of thing against another group, right? That'd be fun. Yeah, oh my gosh, that yeah. just seems like, oh my God, I'd be so stressed. <laughs> ah, yes. Dark and Haven University and the College of Magic. Magnificent. Yes, I love it. Is this Jen's baby? So this, so, well, the, 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 the university has always been a part of Darkenhaven, but yes, Jen's is working on this, but he has had help from others as well. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, this, the, but this is the College of Magic. And, and I love this image because there's a lot going on. You know, there's that really interesting thing on the tower. It's very obvious, right? There's this little interesting person casting a spell down there on the right-hand side. You've got that really big sort of, a creature walking behind another person that is, you know, down there in the bottom. And then in the window, there is a, there's a strange figure underneath the tree on the right-hand side. And then, of course, what the heck is going on on the left-hand side of the, of what's going on in that room on the left-hand side of the building on the, on the top uh, left, I think right? someone's getting up to Man, there some could shenanigans. Be a problem. There's a problem. My God, it's a fireball, right? And there's a little fairy down there. And there's, if you look in the, in the, in the flowers, there's little things peeping out. I mean, it's, it's, uh, it's a wonderful, wonderful, fun image.
Okay, so next up, what is what is this? Is this like a ruin out in the middle? So there is a ruin on the other side of the of the um, uh, of the river, right? Which was the original uh, keep, which was called. Uh, 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 for, come on, Jens, if you're here, it's for, for, for uh, goodness gracious, for Strindus, for Strindus, for Strindus keep, um, I think that's, I'm close. Uh, help me somebody in the chat, if you know. Um, and so this is a part of this area of the Mornwood, uh, and this was one that was done by Kishore, but we have another one that was done by Edvard that I think will, will actually be the one that we use. I've got another plan for this image, uh, so... Uh, but it's a very, Kishore did this one and it is really, really cool. Another place that might appear in another adventure sometime soon. Continue, cameraman. Okay, right, I've also, um, we can put in hashtag Darkenhaven for ah, the secret prize. Hashtag Darkenhaven. Yes. Okay. You could win a free box set. Uh, Signed. <laughs> exciting. It's pretty good, cameraman. I told you it'd be something good. So this is Fisher Town. And um, the pickling plant, right, which, uh, which is there, right there. But this is on the banks of the Mistroon River. And Fishertown is not really in the city. It's sort of outside the city. And it really, uh, it really has a lot of uh, potential uh, for a uh, for li little bit of interest and, and things like that. I think folks are going to love this little, uh, this little village that basically subsists by fishing the Mistroon River, not by fishing the, uh, the Dark Silver Bay, which is uh, on the, obviously down the cliffs uh, beyond the waterfalls. All right, cameraman D. Ah, this is the God's Gate. This enters into the God's Ward of, uh, uh, of Darkenhaven, where many interesting temples and places are. And it's important to remember in Darkenhaven, as in much of the world of Zyothe, there's not this idea that you're sort of devoted to just one God and that's it, right? Uh, there are sort of different communities of gods and triumvirates of gods and groups of gods. That, that people tend to sort of gravitate to. But, uh, you know, listen, I'm going to speak the truth. You know, um, if, you, uh, if you are a fairly decent moral person in the, in the world of Zayafe, and you know that uh, you have an enemy who has hired potentially someone to come against you to take your life, you could very well go to a temple of Slay, the god of assassins, and drop a tithe in the box. So this is the idea, right? The idea is that all the gods are respected. Whether or not they are endeared or liked is a matter of perspective in a lot of situations. And so there are temples in many, many places that are temples to all gods, shrines to all gods, where people can go and worship all of the gods at one time. There are certain uh, temples that sort of bring a number of, of gods that are sort of aligned together. Uh, and, and it really adds for a much more rich mixture because we want religion. We want this religious thing that is going on in Zayathe to be really important. Because if you think about it in a fantastically plausible way, if you have the power of life and death, you have power. And the churches are not afraid to use it. Ha ha! Yes, cameraman. Oh my goodness. Yes, you like that. Ah, yes. Ah, yes. So this is um, the Hall of the Senate. The hall, thank you. This is the Hall of the Senate on Governor's Isle. Thank you for reminding me. And uh, you can see the, the statuary that is around, and you can see the, the hall itself, and of course the fountain that is in there. And this is where the, the Republican Senate meets and uh, hashes out all their stuff, right? And pounds on the table and throws shoes at each other and all the other cool things that politicians do because they're really not that effective. <laughs> <laughs> my, my, my apologies. Wow, you just got evil there. there. Okay. Yeah, do we have any politicians <laughs> watching us? If you're a politician watching us, please forgive me. But you know, you, you got to live with the stigma. If you're a politician that plays D&D, we love you. Yeah, that's probably true. You're probably, <laughs> probably one of the greatest politicians ever. Yeah, uh -huh. Okay. So uh, right, so here's right. interesting. So you have this theater. This is the High Garden Theater. That's the High Garden Theater. But you also have the theater in the round. Yes. Yeah. Is that, that there are two theaters in Darkenhaven that are major theaters. There's some smaller ones, like little theaters, like uh -huh. Anthony, Marvelous Anthony, is part of a little theater, right? Oh my God, you know I love this, that. right? I did not know and we, this. And we, listen, and we got to get going on our singing group. We got to get going. When, when get, are we going to have time? After Genghis Khan. Oh my gosh. Because Belinda and and uh, and uh, and Anthony and um, uh, Gelsinger and there's a number of others. I want to trust and me. And Devin, Devin wants to be a part of that. I right? know. You know, someone had posted in like the gooey den. It was like someone like wrapping a, a, a 
book, like a children's book. And he's like, can someone do this with Myron? And I was like, that sounds like a Devin. Yes. A Devin. We should get Devin into yeah. rap. <laughs> Myron the Ugly Troll. My, 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 <laughs> your face looks like a pile of puke. Anyway, we'll continue on. <laughs> stick away from Alphineas, that. Alphineas, it's not Alphineas, that's, that's for sure. It doesn't sound like him. Oh, yes. So this is in High Garden as well. This is a certain locality that uh, where the sort of uh, rich and powerful tend to hang out, right? There's a rumored <laughs> secret society and other sorts of things going on here. And, of course, that gives you... I, I know you game masters out there are like, damn, that gives us some opportunities, right? So, uh, yeah, so we, uh, we're pretty excited about... I think it's called Mistratus Hall. Is that correct, Camera I think that is the name. Uh, yeah, this is the Mistratus. Yeah, okay. the Mistratus Hall. So we have... Is this the Wizard's Tower? No. No, that's a lighthouse. Yes. This is the Wizard Tower. And what is the... What is the go back to the lighthouse real quick, right? Okay. So, so this, this is... Uh, this is off of the coast. You can see the entry into the gloom port. Yeah, I love this because you've got like right? Dark and Haven in the background. Yeah. Yes. And so, uh, so, but there is a, there's tales around this lighthouse and what it does. And, uh, uh, and I think it might be a worthy visit for one of your, uh, one of your parties uh, in the future. Yes, we'll see. There's tales coming in Dark and Haven about this. You will see. Nice. <laughs> I want an adventure there. <clears throat> yes, and this is the the Tower of Wizardry. Well, you in, can see that in the in the one that's looking that's across the river. Oh no, wait, not that one. Sorry, yeah, you you're can't right. You really see it quite there because it's behind the castle. It's but this, this one, one. Yes, yeah, yes, you can see it there across the river. Yeah. And so, um, is this like a place for wizards to congregate, or is it one particular wizards tower? So no, this is this is the this is sort of the Republic's uh, wizards council, right? The 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 sorcerers and wizards of the magical the magical people. This is uh, uh, this is where they congregate and have meetings, right? And and they they are their pow power in their own right, right? Uh, uh, that the the the, 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 the Zoranthic Circle is is a very interesting group uh, in the world of Zyothe. And uh, you know this is this is what we love about about what we're doing because, you know, people of power tend to group together to gain more power, right? And and they're not always all fully aligned, right? So the the government of Darkenhaven uh, is is sort of has its own thing going on. The government of the Republic has its own thing going on. There is the military, right? There's those folks, right? There are the wizards and the sorcerers and the people of this magical power. There are the churches, right? And then, of course, there are the guilds. And so you put all this together and then add a little bit of organized crime with the Oath of Blood Syndicate and others like that. And all of a sudden, you have this wonderful stew that your party can run up against nemeses that they think are one and in, in reality they're another, right? They could find that they're aiding someone they would never want to aid, right? This is the wonderful stew that happens in a magnificent city setting, right? I just love Well, it. I, I, to me, as a player, um, we, so uh, we've done a few sandbox campaigns yes. um, and it's always like, well, where do you want to go in the city? But we don't have Images, we don't have maps, you know what I'm saying? So it'll be really interesting to play a, a game in this yes. where you actually, like, can I have a scope. Put, I put the map down. Yeah. And then people literally say, you know, we're going to go down uh, Zephlin Street. Uh-huh. And what? And, and I, if someone wants, you know, one of these days I can talk about this, right? Running a city is very interesting because, again, it's a mini sandbox, right? And there's all kinds of places they can go. There's infinite places they can go, really. And when you ponder that as a game master, you're like, oh, my God, I can't do it. I can't keep track of it all, right? So, but what you do, what you do with this is you begin to drop breadcrumbs and maybe you have two or three different tracks going on at the same time. You could run two groups or three groups in the same city at the same we time. Have. Oh, I can't even tell you, right? <laughs> but listen, here's the thing. You don't have to place things before. Always remember this as a game master. When they get there, you can place it. And so the illusion of choice becomes part of the adventure, right? And my players all know this, right? They know, but, but again, you know, it's hard when you play with a group that just wants to go and just run around all over the place and really make it hard on you and you have to you have Dude, I'm 100% always... a railroady player. I'm like, railroad the hell out of me. No, listen, I mean, <laughs> everyone needs to understand so, this. I really believe this in yeah. my heart of hearts and I don't want to take away, listen, I'm pretty good improvisation, yeah. okay? I'm pretty good, okay? 
And I don't want to take away from the marvelous improv GMs that are out there that can just, just run the whole thing and just keep track of it all and all of that stuff. But I like a lot of layers in yeah. the campaign. I like a lot of things going on all at once. I like to keep, you know, multiple nemeses, all kinds of complexities in my, and that is very, very hard to do in an improvisational environment. By the same token, players want agency, right? And, and so if you're really trying to railroad all the time, right, that is difficult. So I tend, like I said, to live more in the middle here. I think the answer lies in that place where sometimes bad things happen to the players that they don't want to have happen to them. They get no agency. Sorry, pal. That's what happens in tales, right? I don't know that Gandalf had a lot of agency when the Balrog was coming across the bridge. I do agree that there's yes. a balance. Um, yes, it's a balance. It's what makes it good, right? Is there some, so you got tales that you're underpinning, but I have had literally situations at the table where players did something that changed the entire track of the adventure. Yeah. And you have to be open to that. You have to be open to move things around. Don't try to push people into places where they don't want to go, right? Because you might find a better adventure by going along with the tale that they're helping you tell, right? Mm -hmm. So this is a marvelous square, right? And this is, uh, you can see there's a Sarth uh, walking there in the middle and a maroon. And actually there are two, there's a, there's a maroon, uh, what appears to be maybe a maroon or a dwarf, uh, saluting the maroon that is walking by. So, you know, this, you know, th we, we really want to try to get more of the flavor of this marvelous, marvelous city. And, and we think we have done that and, and really helping you. Oh, there's Scrivener Square. Yes. And the building, Joshua. Yes. The, the destroyed building there in the, in the top, right, where maybe things will happen. So, so Scrivener Square is where there are barristers and lawyers and book binders and publishers. And, uh, and it, it is actually a place where lots of poets and bards tend to sometimes come and congregate. There are others as well, but this is one of them. And, and there's an open air market there. It is, it is just a, a magnificent uh, little place uh, just to the east of High Garden and uh, to the north, uh, north of Cobbleston. Anyway, my friends, that is Darkenhaven, a marvelous place in the world of Zyothe, in the Republic of Zoranthia. Yes, where you may go someday and have a sticky adventure yourself. Ha ha! How's that? Excellent. <laughs>